Hi, I'm Fred Reggie, and I want to give you a peek at New Orleans Mardi Gras, behind the mask. Predating Christianity by several centuries, Roman celebrations of spring and fertility included Saturnalia and Lupercalia. Christianity ushered in the festivities as a pre-Lenten celebration, figuring it would be easier to do that than to eliminate the popular celebration to which the people were accustomed. The use of the word carnival was introduced into the Christian celebration, derived from Latin root words carne and lavare to remove meat. It prepared festival goers for the meatless Lenten season that followed. The French term Mardi Gras translates to Fat Tuesday. It was to be a final time of indulgence and fun before the 40-day Lenten period began on Ash Wednesday. The French brought the celebration to their settlements in the southern United States in the 1600s and migrated to New Orleans where it's become a multi-billion dollar industry that draws over one million visitors to the city each year. After several decades of disorderly celebrations marred by violent outbursts, city leaders of the southern states debated ending the carnival custom when in 1857 a secret society of men called the Mystic Crew of Comus organized a new kind of parade that proved to be more orderly and fun. Following the Civil War, more crews were organized and the celebration grew. These groups are responsible for all of the parades and festivities that officially began on January 6th, the 12th night after Christmas, and continue through Mardi Gras Day. Other notable New Orleans crews with interesting names include Rex, Zulu, Mardi Gras Indians, and Bacchus. Each is unique in its membership, its history, and its relevance to the celebratory season. The season culminates Mardi Gras Day, when over a million people crowd parade routes shouting, throw me something, mister, in hopes of snatching beads, trinkets, doubloons, and coconuts as souvenirs of the day. Echoing the ribaldry at Rio's carnival, the New Orleans event bears all as revelers imbibe and discard their inhibitions, and a few other things I might add. Today, many cities put on their Mardi Gras, but the granddaddy of them all is the city that care for God, home of Bourbon Street and the French Quarter, New Orleans, Louisiana. It all begins in the pre-dawn hours as floats, Mask riders, equestrians, and marching bands assemble and prepare to deliver a show unsurpassed by anything ever seen by the crowd. Fat Tuesday is truly the final blowout before the penitential season of Lent begins. Mardi Gras is not just for New Orleans either. 29 cities in 12 states host some Mardi Gras event. Ten of those are in Louisiana alone. On the international map, you'll find over 20 Mardi Gras celebrations in countries with significant Catholic populations. Countries like Italy, France, Germany, Brazil, Canada, Puerto Rico, even Croatia. Some of the celebrations incorporate local traditions, as experienced in the Mamou, Louisiana, Courier de Mardi Gras, where masked horsemen visit farmhouses asking for ingredients to put in a communal gumbo at the end of the day. Regardless of the locale, Mardi Gras is a celebration not soon forgotten by the revelers fortunate enough to experience it. This is one experience that should be on everyone's bucket list. What are you waiting for? Come on down and laissez le bon temps rouler. That's French for let the good times roll. I'll see you there. Bye.